Welcome back to Airsoft FPS and Boneyard. We're going to continue on the TAC-41 upgrade series. If you've followed the last two videos, you know that we've already looked at the effect of three different springs. A stock 75 Newton spring, a Raypax 2.8 Joule spring, and a Silverback 150 Newton spring. Looked at the effect of each of those springs on the FPS, energy, and sound of a fully stocked TAC-41. In the most recent video, we swapped out the stock piston head for the Silverback Advanced piston head that has air brake options, and we redid similar testing, two different BB weights, the three different springs, to see what the effect of this piston was on a mostly stock TAC-41. The next few videos, we're going to start getting into some more advanced and expensive upgrades. So. The good news is the Raypax 2 Joule spring is now here, so now we have a 75 Newton Silverback spring, which is the stock TAC-41 spring. The next strongest will be this Raypax 2 Joule. I also have a 2.8 Joule, and the strongest spring we have is a Silverback 150 Newton. So we will be adding in some results for this 2 Joule spring. We are also going to look at the Kraken pop-up unit from Stalker, which is right here and also the Morpheus barrel from Stalker. Uh, this is a 510 millimeter long high performance barrel from Stalker. It goes well with this uh, Stalker hop-up unit. The Stalker Kraken also comes with a new cylinder head, but the cylinder head is made for gas blowback type barrels, which is what this Morpheus barrel is. So for now, we are not going to change the barrel and we are not going to change the hop-up yet. These will be in a future video said I can't use this hop up on the stock barrel. But for today's video, we're going to focus on the Scorpion Pistons. This is the Stalker Scorpion Piston. It's a modular variable mass piston. It comes with two different piston heads. We've got a heavier steel head and a lighter aluminum head. There's actually two different piston cups for the top. The glossier one, which is currently on the aluminum piston, you might be able to see some of the light reflect, uh, is the high FPS head. And the matte one, the softer rubber, is the lower sound head. Uh, so we'll, we can swap these caps off between the two piston heads. In addition, we got a new uh, spring guide that came with the Scorpion piston. We have the backing piece for the back of the piston that looks like this part of the stock piston. A bunch of seals and another air brake. So the seals go between each of the different links. These are all just modular, screw together weights. Uh, there are four steel weights. These are the heavier ones. During the testing, I'll tell you what weight the piston is actually at and what pieces are in it. And we also have five aluminum weights, which are lighter. Still using the stock cylinder head. I also do have an adapter that will allow us to actually put this Silverback Advanced Piston Head on top of whatever we come up with for our stalker weights. Uh, so instead of this head, we can use this one. I'm going to apologize ahead of time. This video is going to have quite a bit of data. And for the future testing of the Scorpion Piston, we will thin it down a little bit. This table shows what we're testing. Once again, we're running our TAC-41. This time, we have a Raypax 2 Joule spring, which we're subbing in instead of the stock 75 Newton spring moving. We're running the Scorpion piston itself, and that piston comes with two different head options. The Scorpion piston itself is a variable mass piston, so we can run it at a light setting, a heavy setting, or anything in the middle. So for this video, for each of these head configurations, we're going to run the piston at its heaviest standard length weight and its lightest standard length weight. What that means is I'm not adding extra sections to try to short stroke the TAC-41. We'll do that later in a different video. With each of those weights, we have the option of air brakes. So regardless of what head I use, I can use air brakes. The Scorpion piston came with its own air brakes and the Silverback piston has its own air brakes. Silverback piston head, rather. The advanced piston head from Silverback comes with short, medium, and long, but they're not length adjustable, so our options are short break or long break. We'll skip the medium one to keep testing down a little bit. 
For the Scorpion piston, they're actually threaded air brakes, so you can change the length of the two different air brakes that it comes with. It comes with a long air brake and a short air brake. So what I tested was, first, no air brake. Second, the shorter air brake at its shortest setting, so threaded all the way into the top of the head. The short brake at its longest setting, so threaded out as far as I could go. And then I did the same thing with the long brake. The long brake at its long setting and the long brake at its short setting. As you can see, there's quite a large number of tests that went into this video and the data does get a little bit difficult to look at when you have this much of it, which is why in the future we're gonna thin it down a bit. Let's dive into the mountain of data that is this video. Starting with our feet per second, our muzzle velocity on the 0.2 gram BBs, very similar to the other videos, we're testing two BB weights, 0.2 and 0.45. On the Y axis, we have three different groupings. We have the Silverback Advanced Head, the Scorpion Silent Cup, and the Scorpion High FPS Cup. So those are the, the heads we talked about. The colors of the graphs represent different air brakes. In the case of the Silverback Head, there is no adjustability on the length of each individual brake. So if we look at this light brown bar, look down low, we see that that is the long, long heavy. What that means is I'm using a Scorpion Silent Piston Cup, the long air brake sent at its longest setting with a heavy piston, meaning I made the piston all steel rather than all aluminum sections. The light piston is all aluminum sections rather than all steel. The goal here was just to show you the effect of changing those weights, and it can be customized to get anything in between. There's not a ton to look at, admittedly, for the two joule ray pack spring, at least with respect to what I wanted to hit as my goals. You can see none of these numbers are anywhere near 550 FPS, which is my field's limit. But to take away a couple basic conclusions, the high FPS cup does exactly what it says it's going to. It does give us, in general, higher FPS than the silent version. Whenever we run a lighter piston, so for example, if we look down here at these lower two bars, that is our no air brake light piston, no air brake heavy. The heavier piston is generally going to have lower FPS with the 0.2 gram BBs, and we see that repeated. The orange bar is light, the gray bar is heavy, yellow is light, blue is heavy. So even with the air brakes, for the most part, that trend doesn't change. The difference between light and heavy is more significant on the high FPS cup than it is on the silent cup. With respect to standard deviations, the silent cup actually has the advantage. You can see our standard deviation is lower for almost every setting and a lot tighter grouped than the high FPS piston cup. There were some pretty impressive performers here. The Silverback advanced with its short air brake. In the case of the Silverbacks, there is no short short, it's just short because I can't adjust it, uh, which is why there's a bunch of zeros here. That's pretty impressive. Our goal was one, so getting pretty close there. Uh, Silent Cup, we had one that came in at 1.3 and the high FPS, we had one at 1.5. But once again, we're not pushing high enough FPS to meet our goal. So the standard deviations aren't terribly critical at this point. Moving on to the heavier BBs, the 0.45 gram BBs, we have a similar trend to what we had with the 0.2 gram BBs. The silent cup is going to be slower than the high FPS, which is great, that's what it's supposed to do. However, you see that we start to flip-flop a little bit on the heavy piston versus the light piston. So starting with no breakdown here, the lighter piston has slightly higher FPS than the heavy piston. But if we move up to the short air brake at its shortest setting, the light piston is actually has less FPS than the heavy. And then it flips back again. And you can see it kind of bounces around a little bit and the silent scorpion cup actually completely flips it for almost every test. For almost every test, the silent cup with the heavier piston actually had greater FPS, which is an interesting conclusion to keep in mind if you use this setup and you're trying to go quiet, so you use that silent cup, actually might be better off running a higher mass piston. Now we'll see if this holds up later on when we go to a higher strength spring, 
the two, two joule rate pack spring I was hoping would get us higher up in FPS with the adjustments we can do on the mass of this piston. But as we already mentioned, we're not hitting our goal. So we're gonna have to go to a bigger spring. The standard deviations typically are better with the 0.45 gram BBs. And we saw that once again, very nice groupings from that silent cup. And the highest we had was 2.8 feet per second standard deviation. A lot of these are sub twos. We even got a one in there, which is right on our goal. So right now, I, I like the look of the silent cup, probably with a heavy piston and ideally with a bigger spring. I think that should give us ideally a relatively quiet replica that has low standard deviation and with a bigger spring will hopefully hit our FPS goal. There's not a lot to look at in the energy results because our feet per second measurements were low. We know our energy results are also going to be low. We could have hoped for a little bit of joule creep on the 0.45 gram BBs, but we didn't get enough to hit my 2.8 joule target, even without any air brake on the Scorpion piston. I still couldn't hit 2.8 joules with the two joule ray pack spring. If this was the 2.8 joule ray pack spring, probably gonna be a different story. All right, now the interesting one, let's look at sound. Remember our goal here was to get this replica under 90 decibels. And for the first time in this series, we actually do see a result for the 0.2 gram BBs that is under 90, just barely. And that is the long air brake on the Silverback Advanced Piston Head with the heavy piston configuration. Outside of that, you know, our baseline here with no air brake, lighter heavy, we're around 98, 99 decibels. Uh, this light green bar here is once again, the no air brake. So our baseline with the Scorpion piston and the two joule ray pack spring, it's gonna be about 98 to 100 decibels. So it's kind of keep that in mind. That's what we're comparing to. As expected, whenever we start using longer air brakes and we extend the air brakes out longer. So for example, we see this 92.8 decibel reading for this dark blue bar. That is a long air brake at its short setting with a light piston on the high FPS cup. It's a pretty good reading. And a lot of these are generally trending that way. As we add those air brakes, we do see some of that sound come off. It doesn't go as low as I was hoping. I was hoping most of these would read low 90s to less than 90. But for 0.2 gram BBs, this isn't bad. In general, we're cutting off at least five decibels by using these air brakes. It actually doesn't look like we have to use the long air brakes in this case to get as much advantage. But keep in mind, this is still a weaker spring. So the large air brakes may not be coming fully into effect quite yet. With the 0.45 gram BBs, the Silverback Advanced Piston Head had a really good showing. Both numbers for both setups, the short brake and the long brake were both under 90, with the long air brake being under 88 decibels, which is pretty cool. In general, the heavier BBs are a little bit quieter. So our baseline here is say closer to 94 to 95 for the high piston cup and 97 when we don't have, or for the silent cup which actually shows that for the high piston cup with the heavier BBs, the air brakes didn't really seem to do much of anything. Whereas with the silent cup, it took two or three decibels off, with the exception of this one nice low 91, but that's the long air brake set at its longest setting with a light piston. So there's not gonna be much FPS on this. Overall, pretty happy with the results. It was a lot of fun playing with the Scorpion piston setup. If you're someone like me who likes to kind of tinker and tune things in, it's a really neat product to play with. We're going to repeat, as mentioned, a lot of this testing for the other three springs that we have on cue. Next video is going to be the 2.8 Joule Ray Pack spring, and I may combine that with the Ray Packs Hulk spring as well. We're going to simplify the testing a little bit. One, to reduce the amount of testing I have to do, and two, to make the graphs much easier to read. Uh, these graphs had a few too many bars for my taste, and it's pretty hard to, to figure out exactly what we were seeing. We're still going to test all three heads, so the high FPS, the silent head, and the silverback advanced. We're still going to use the short break and the long breaks, but rather doing the short break at a short setting and the short break at a long setting, we're just going to do the short break at its shortest setting and the long break at its longest setting, knowing that anywhere between there, 
we can dial in based on how we unscrew or screw in whichever air brake we want. We're also going to skip the no air brake setting. In all likelihood, if you're buying this piston, probably going to use the air brakes that it comes with. If you saw anything in the data that I missed, please leave a comment below and let me know, and I'll add some notes to fix it up. And if there's anything else you would like to see tested in this video series, please leave a comment below. I think parallel to this TAC-41 series, I might also do a budget DMR build series similar to this, just as a learning experience for myself and for anyone else who wants to follow along on how to build a budget DMR from the ground up.